What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today is going to be the second episode in the LED Grow Lights 101 series and today we're going to be talking specifically about the shape and profile of LED lights and how it plays a role in where you put them and what you grow under them. Let's check it out. This episode will cover three light profiles, one being a bulb or UFO style, two is going to be your bar light or rope lights, and three your kind of high output brick or panel lights. In order to really help you understand where and when they're very useful and not useful, we're going to jump right into three case studies that should illustrate this quite clearly. Here's a simple case study to kind of help explain why the profile matters. Here is our shelf, our pretend shelf that has about two feet of clearance between the top and bottom shelf. And you can see right here why it matters. Starting on the left, you can see if we kind of mounted a little UFO style light or a bulb right underneath there, you can see because it's like a spotlight, it only really hits two plants and it's probably way too close for such a high wattage and you'll probably end up burning those two plants. However, moving to the middle example with the bar style LED light or rope style, you can see this covers six plants. It's way more efficient too for your plants because even though it's only 20 watts, because of the proximity, you're getting almost all your energy into the plant. So it's gonna work very well for this application. And if you find one bar at 20 watts is not enough, you can always add another one up there to increase your wattage and your overall energy being given to your plants. Now moving to the right one more time, you can see the really high wattage, like 200 watt brick style LED lights would just be overkill and would not work at all. This is basically twice as bad as UFO lights and you're just wasting a ton of energy just to kill two plants. Now here's another study where the roles are kind of reversed. Now we can see we're actually hanging these all from the ceiling and they have about eight to nine feet to actually hit the ground to get to our plants. Starting from the left, you can see our UFO spotlight is starting to get an advantage over our bar lights because now the light can penetrate pretty far down with 100 watts and because it's got a lot more time to spread out, it can reach more plants. Contrary to the last study, you can see these bar lights are performing the poorest. Because they have so much distance to cover, the 20 watts is not enough energy to get all the way down to the plants. So if you plan on hanging these bar lights up high, they're going to do virtually nothing for your plants. However, looking at more of the brick style LED light that's high wattage, it's almost twice as good as our uh, UFO light. Because it's usually a little longer, it's not as spotlighty, it covers a little more distance and it has a lot more penetration. Those 200 watts will carry that light down there much further so your plants sitting on the ground are going to get a lot more energy compared to that spotlight. About twice as much because it is twice the wattage. If we do one more additional study to really kind of hit home on how this all works, what if we put a much larger plant underneath all these lights? Starting with the UFO light, you can see you're actually getting your money's worth out of this. The right amount of light is going to hit your uh, giant plant and even though there's some fall off towards the very bottoms, it doesn't matter because there isn't any plant material down there anyways. So that 100 watt UFO spotlight is working perfect for your single large Monstera style plant. Looking at the bar lights though, they are still pretty much useless. They're not going to provide any real energy towards your plant because again, it's just a little too high. And even if you brought the light closer, it still wouldn't have good penetration down to the lower leaves. Moving to the right one more, we can see our high wattage output kind of brick style LED light. And you can see quite a bit more energy is going to be wasted as it hits the ground because it's got a lot more penetration. However, if you do have a really thick foliage plant, this might be necessary so that way you can get some extra energy down to the lower leaves. But in this situation, I would say that the UFO style light works pretty well. So to sort of conclude those three case studies, really in my opinion the spotlight or ufo style bulbs are definitely good for one big plant you can really kind of accentuate it in your collection or just provide it some much needed light if it's in the corner of your house the bar style lights are honestly the best to be putting on shelves they're extremely modular you can add or take away you get them in like a six or eight packs you can do multiple shelves and they have a controllable wattage so you're not burning your plants easily. The same goes for some of the lower wattage square panels, those 12 by 12 inch panels that are about 30 watts. Those work pretty well on shelves too. However, they need a little more headspace for mounting, which is why I don't like them. And finally, the more square style panels or like the LED bricks, those work really good if you have a lot of headspace where you can hang it up high and kind of let the wattage do the work by spreading out and kind of getting multiple plants at once. And you can always lower or heighten them based on what your plants need. All right, guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope this helps clear up some more misconceptions or just questions about LED grow lights and what kind of style you might need for your grow space. Hopefully this plus the previous episode and the future episodes, you guys can figure out exactly what lights can work for you the best, the cheapest, and the most efficiently. As always, guys, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.